So first of all, good evening, everyone. And I'm so sorry I'm delayed for 10 minutes. So without wasting our time, let's start the session in HR first. So today's topic for the HR session is employee empowerment. Let me share the slides with you. So are the slides visible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. OK. Let me introduce myself. I'm Sangeeta Verma. I've done my MBA in banking and finance. And down in the slides only, you can see my experiences. Two years with advertising and marketing agency, two years with bank, two years with the financial company, then two years with the college as HOD of management, four years with the export and import as an operation manager. And uh, just yesterday, all uh, day before yesterday, only I have completed my six years with the company KD organization as DCM. And now it's uh, running seventh year. Along with that, I'm a freelancer at, with uh, Learnovate. So guys, uh, today's topic is employee empowerment, means empowering your human resources at your organization in every industries. So in the session, what we'll see is we'll know the meaning of empowerment, need of empowerment, approaches to empowerment, then empowerment model, process of employee empowerment, significance of empowerment, characteristics of empowered employee. Now let's see the meaning. First, let's understand the meaning of empowerment. In this slide, you can see that power is a tool to pass on to those who work on organization's behalf. Means to empower means to enable, to allow, or to permit, and can be conceived as both self-initiated and initiated by others. Empowerment is the process of enabling employees to set their own work-related goals, making decisions, and solving problems within their sphere of responsibility and authority means empowerment is the process of sharing power with employees. Certain powers are shared with the human resources of your organization. Empowerment can be defined as giving employees a certain degree of authority, autonomy, and responsibility for decisions, means which allows to make the decision combinedly. You just don't decide yourself. You let your human resources get the involvement in decision making process so in human relation term if you see the empowerment avoid thinking of it as something that one individual does for another don't think like that you are doing something for others means understand the concept of empowering in our daily life also you can feel that at home also if certain decisions are made even from the uh, children are also sometimes involved in like taking certain decisions. So that is empowering your children, empowering your family members, like that only. If an organization's higher management thinks that the human resources which are associated with them are like a families, and they should get the empowerment of getting involved in the process of making decisions, sharing the uh, work responsibilities and all that. So that is empowering. Can I go to the next slide, guys? Any problem over here? So over here, let's understand needs of empowerment. Needs of empowerment is like powerlessness and left low self-efficiency. Sometimes what happens is your employee is uh, good in technical field, educational-wise, and many more things. But when it comes to the organizational goal assessment, they start feeling like powerless. Sometimes the higher authorities, they tend to pressurize to the lowest and don't want them to get involved. They think that we are in the superior power and we can like say whatever to our subordinates and they have to do it. So 
that should not be there. Those those subordinates should not feel like that. So powerlessness and low self efficacy means if uh, subordinates are not involved in certain some of the decisions, they might talk at the back, and you can see those things are affecting the productivity of the department or productivity of uh, certain organizations or industry. So you should not do that. When these things are identified, you should understand that now here, every individual HR human resources of my organization in an industry has to feel like uh, they are full over there, powerful in the sense of taking decisions which is related to work, which is in the best benefit of the company, best benefit in the organizations. So these things affect that. And now five broad approaches to empowerment. Broader concepts is like helping employees achieve job mandatory. Sometimes if you empower, you share the spares of your task with the subordinates, those subordinates are also get, in a way, are getting helped. They are helping to the higher authority and getting back the help from their subordinates also. So the job is completely done on a time, right? In a very productive manner. Then allowing more control. Let them have a self-control on them, their concepts. Do not try to dominate. Do not try to control them. Providing successful rule models. If, if you are sharing the spares, sharing authorities, sharing certain decisions, asking their concepts also, it ha what happens is you stand out as a role model in the among in the employees, in the departments also. Using social responsibility and consciousness, giving emotional support. Sometimes what happens is uh, in a group, if, if you, you are a team leader, suppose if you're a team leader and you you have 10 to 20 subordinates working under you and they come and report. So what happens is in between them also, there are some conflicts uh, slowly putting up small, small things brings out the conflict. So to solve them, to understand them, you have to be pretend as, not pretend, but actually you have to get involved with them that you guys are only not working. I'm also... I also share. So those type of some emotional supports and mental support is required for the employees. And when empowering is done, whether that is higher level, middle level, low level, all of them they stand out as a understanding with each others. And what are the approaches to empowerment? Social structure perspective, psychological approach, and critical perspective. Mostly what happens is uh, if you are empowering the employees, their psychological aspect needs to understand. And they, whether they are completely involved or not, completely the power is shared or not, but a psychological concept stands out in their mind that we are also the part of this organization. We are also the part of this decision. We are also the part of this goals. A company never decides himself. A higher management does not decide itself. They make us get involved in it. So that concepts come up with it. Then social structure perspective, society, if you will say. Suppose you organize a conference with other companies for lights and you are going out skirts in some meetings and all. And over there, you, if you take any decision, if you are doing some presentation or attending a meeting, a higher subordinates gives a like a authority to the juniors and say that why don't you go and do the presentation i am over there with you if you lack somewhere that concept perspective and critical perspective is what critical perspective is, is like uh, you took a decision your subordinates took a decision and in, in a way it uh, little bit got out of track so the higher management or the team leader over there can take a support of it and what happens over there is a person starts to thinking that if uh, this was a mistake this is my last mistake uh, employee a subordinate along with the employee things like that and they try to 
correct themselves, realizing their mistake. You do not need to point out to them. They understand it by themselves. So over till here, any confusion, guys? OK, let's see the core dimension of employee empowerment. If you are like given, you're giving completely the empowerment in a hierarchical wise, in a parallel wise, what happens is the core dimension is surrender control. You don't need to control them, their mind, their uh, their technical aspect, their educational aspect, their work aspect. You don't need to control them at all. They're always at the self-controlled way that is surrendered control. Create buy-in. You don't need to like always think of uh, switching the employees or switching the department. No, need to. Then employee vote. You don't require, if they are voting, if there's certain thing happens and voting is done, if you have given empowerment to them, employees vote counts over there. You make a process or you make a decision, higher uh, crucial decision with the help of employees vote. What happens? A drastical change comes out there. Then sources manages and creates the team decision. If only you are deciding and something falls out to be wrong. And those who are associated with you, will they will say, we were never there. We were always thinking that why he's not asking us, why she is not asking us, why he, she is taking decision by themselves. But if empowerment is done to the employees in an equalization way, what happens is over there, if certain thing goes out of wrong also, not a single person's mistake, right? A team decision was there. And what they do after that, they totally get involved in correcting out those decisions. Till here, anything to ask, guys? Please come up. Am I audible or not? If there is anything, please say. OK. Let's go to the next slide, then. See the first, let's see the significance of empowerment. What happens if the empowerment and employee feels that he she is empowered? What happens is enhances belief of employee that they are in fact contributes to the organization's success. Means they are also 100% involvement of organizational success. One poor feeling comes is perceived of work means they understand the concept. They take it in a better we are way is back. Employees believe that they have a there's nothing wrong. We have done it back on important decision. They always believe that there was an impact of of important decision. It was not that a higher management or the team leader took a decision by themselves and they are gratitude for them. No, but employees' involvement was there and all the employees, they share the organizational success in an equal ratio, organizational achievement in equal ratio, credentials in equal ratio. So um, these are the significance of empowerment. Then what is like characteristics of empowered employee? What are the characteristics? If an employee is empowered, you will find certain things, characteristic them. Trust, mutual respect, involved in the decision making. There have only been two things in the cooperation. I mean, trust of colleagues. It's a trust between the organization and the human resources. Those are like the major part of your organization, the employees. That 
trust cannot be ruptured by outer influence if employees are empowered in certain of the companies mutual respect there is a respect for higher level lower level middle level and the organizational attributes so a mutual respect is over there no one feels we are superior no one feels we are the differentials you know then involved in the decision making any decisions are made it was just not one man decided it's completely a team is completely a human resources it just not companies ceo or companies md took the decision it's the companies human resources combinedly put the effort and took the decision building the cooperation obviously a organization is always not built only with the ceos or mds or anything the major aspect of organization building cooperation is employees the human resources so every companies need to value the human resources of the organization of their industry of their organization because if they are valued they are empowered you will find out the drastic changes now value people clearly show your regard for people respect irrespective of performance don't talk at the back of any employee that this we gave a work to them and he is or she is not has not done it and this affected no need of blaming gaming is jump completely talking to them if they are mistaken correct them help them support them if you find that they can be corrected then what are the degrees of empowerment total managerial control min- minus no employees discretions participatory management management generally controls the work and the contact but allow employees to make some decisional that is typical minor ones self management process has been make most decisions preparing to their work and work setting so the, when the empowerment is there the degrees varies like no employees should be discretion don't think that this this cannot do so we will not give them no make a part to them also in certain things might be their learning phase and they it might be that we we are not aware of their skills sometimes and they brings out the drastic ones process of empowerment valuing employees sharing vision trust provision of decision making information feedback always remember our best hr is who takes a frequent feedback with the colleagues with the departments with the subordinates with the higher management every time the constant feedback is there and feedback should be very genuine very brief very distinctive then solving problems social reinforcement training and emotional support so these things plays a vital role in the process of empowerment once the employees are empowered they feel they are valued you once you share the vision organizations vision is shared they become a part of that vision mutual trust between the organization and human resources between colleagues between subordinates between the three levels of management develops and bonds strong provisions of decision making information share any information with their team members you can say feedback solving problems one hand cannot just solve the problem sometimes in the organization but collectively when you get combined your cooperation can solve that and solving problems social reinforcement training and emotional support till here any of the confusion guys okay can i go to the next slide in empowerment there is one model which is very successful in every degree of the organization in every industry you can find this this is randolph's empowerment model so what happens in this model is what when the empowerment is done perception of empowerment competence high value job measuring increased use of talent you need to understand the skill talent and the competence of your employees so what happens is removes what does the empowerment model does first thing is it removes the conditions of powerlessness when empowerment is done to the employees they 
starts feeling powerful to them in certain is at the inside feeling of them having in their head that they are powerlessness varies from their eradicates from means change the leadership reward system job only empowerment is done if you are if an organization tries to psychologically eradicate the mind concept of the employee that they are powerless with certain changing the leadership giving rewards changing the position sometimes and preparing a system which calculatively makes them understand that they are also one of the crucial part of that organization then enhances job related self efficiency over here what happens is self efficiency is always calculated by an employee when they, they are power they comes with the concept that they are also the crucial part of the organization job mandatory control and accountability role in models reinforcement support over this and then what happens they understand the value of their work they understand the value of their talent and skills and competence organization also understands and they are rewarded and they are understood means competence high value job measuring increase to use of talent then and when all this empowerment and the empowerment model is fulfilled what happens you will find a drastic in their performance productivity that is in every individual human resource of your organization performs in a 100% score wise so employee empowerment means empower them enhance them enable them and keep them engaged then is the correct concept of employee empowerment make them understand that they are also a part of that particular goal of an organization make understand their engagement in the work give them empowered enhance them means give time to time training if they need it enable them don't keep them passive make them active in certain of the things so this is the randolph's empowerment model which is very helpful for any sort of organization any sort of industry if they think that the employees of their organization their industries are the valued resources for them gone are the days when they used to be like uh, uh, the team leaders or anyone who used to like dominate and suppress gone are the days now everyone is equalized even a junior level employees are also a part of their organization so these things plays a vital concept solution till here any any concept which you have not understood or anything you need to ask guys if you are not able to like uh, speak up please write it out if you are not understanding anything so let's go to the next slide then what are the three labels over here we'll see the three labels of employee empowerment first one is encouraging employees to play a more effective role in their work involving the employees to improve the ways things are done enabling the employees to make bigger decision without having referred to a senior so when employees are empowered there are three levels first always encourage them to perform their work in a very effective way when they are empowered secondly you can make them improve the ways the work is done if a work is done in by them in 20 minutes you make them improve that 20 minutes and let it minimize to the 10 minutes then enabling them to take a bigger decision like have without referring to senior means you are empowering them that you are valuing their decision sometimes which was very crucial at the man, time of works which is like if you go and ask to the senior level if they might take a time consuming and you might lose certain of the opportunities which was very good for the organization so you are enabling them to make a bigger decisions now what are the challenges of employee empowerment message disconnect insufficient training need to can managers breakdown of organizational structure and 
these are the four major challenges. If you give an employee empowerment, these challenges are there. Obviously, challenges are everywhere in every step of the organizational running in our personal life also, professional life also. But we are human beings and we should always find the solution to the challenges, like message disconnect. Sometimes what happens, we gave a message and you know, between all these some blunder things happens and the message is not delivered properly, right? Then insufficient training. It is possible that certain employees were in very much in need of their training and we kept on postponing it. And lastly, what happened? Employee do not feel like empowered. Reluctant managers. Some managers are very reluctant. They think that what we have said, what we have done are only the last and the understandable way we are the superiors you subordinates are nowhere what we say you do it so such managers are also the challenges for an employees if you think that employees has to be empowered some of them like that even now also you will find some jo maine bol diya bas wahi hai they are such such a type of people and those managers are never going to understand the concept of leveling it they always are in the way that uh, whatever their subordinates are doing if they that is good they take the beneficiary of them if something is bad they just put it on their subordinates head so that is not good one so such relevant managers are also challenges for employee empowerment and breaks breakdown of organizations yes if an empowerment is done one thing an organizer or industry wise should understand that to what label over in the challenges you understand the label of empowering your employees without rupturing the organizational structure you should always think in a such way so these challenges are there will be there and it all it depends on the organizational the uh, respective way industries that how you are going to take these challenges it totally depends on whether you take these challenges as a building roads of your organization or you just take these challenges in a negative way and you are always there do not want to take risk whereas now it's high time that we companies start taking certain risk related to our human resources if we turn out to be some better ones and the one who would takes the challenges and completely does it whether that is a individual person whether that is a team whether that is a organization or industry and i hope now when we were suffering from uh covid thing it out major challenges to the companies but what they did they didn't lose their hope they worked on it and they brought out some drastic changes so we are also supposed to do that can i go to the next slide if there is any confusion please come up okay then let's see the advantages and disadvantages of employee empowerment what are the advantages increased dedication of employees increases in productivity increased organizational responsiveness and commitment to organizational goals disadvantages it can lead to decreased productivity some people think that productivity can be decreased but it's not that it depends upon the industry it depends upon the level of working criteria some projects lack of centralization of decision can cause confusion obviously it does it but it should be like a way that department wise the decisions are taken it can create tension between employee and manager if a manager is reluctant and an employee is reluctant no one confusion and the tension will always be between them so it needs to be sure that both the employees subordinates and the managers have a very humble and cordial relation between them in a way of professional life not in a ma- personal wise in a professional till to you time period you are at the work can be counter productive and increase pressure yeah productive in like counter productive is sometimes uh, uh, deadlines are not met and uh, you have pressure like 
oh my god deadlines are there and we have to do it so advantages and disadvantages always are there but we need to work out on uh, those disadvantages to turn them this those disadvantages into advantages as per our industry as per our, our organizations no ways of employee empowerment express confidence in employees ability hold high expectations concerning their performance allow employees to participate in the decision making process allow employees freedom and autonomy in how they perform their jobs use position power in a positive way and limit the use of for excess power set inspirational and managerial goals for employees what are the complications giving up control can be threatening to some managers some managers think that oh my god our control has been taken and now we can't control our subordinates that is very bad how can that be done and those few managers start playing dirty politics inside the organization which has to be stopped managers may not want to share power with someone they look down upon managers fear losing their own place and special privilege in the system it is and these things are only applicable to those managers who always wants to take the credit of the work done of their subordinates they are only feared way but those managers who know how to like put the credential how to appreciate and how to whom this work has to be taken and not taken this appreciation and taking the privilege that doesn't matter to those certain of employees managers those managers who think that we are the part of the organization we are the team of the organization will not will never have a threatening of like uh, losing out their control or to them the ones who are looking no it's just the educational criteria which made the managers in a higher level and subordinates in a lower level it's just that some techniques and some skills that's it but if you see in a human concept wise in an organization you are always as a part of the crucial human resource for the organization so instead of managers is high time now those if some of you are thinking that we you have to be managers certain things has to be like challenges has to be taken by you people also in a future managers to be turned out so when you want to be a future manager who comes out to be a role model for their subordinates do not get threatening of giving up the control do not understand that our power is shared or anything do not try think that we were given certain privilege and that has been taken out eradicate your fear and be equalization to your employees your subordinates everything will be good so empowering employees like information knowledge power and reward you can see over there this is completely a new management style employee empowerment is completely a new management style promotes individual work group involvement workforce participation group involvement and autonomy develops self managing work team when a when there is employee empowerment you do not need to control anyone they know how to control themselves they understand their work they understand their value they understand their privilege you don't only to threaten right so this is the things now let's see to the next one. what is the rationale behind empowerment positive rationale okay promotes creative thinking increased employee contribution leads to self motivation and a sense of independence that is translated into power equals lower absenteeism and better productivity employees have more satisfaction work and increased depth of competition among employees less conflict with administration and managers employees are more likely to agree with changes if they participate in decision making so better ideas better decision better quality better productive and therefore better competitiveness so positive things are has to be always brought out if employees are empowered their mind concept psychologically they are positive then technically they are positive and work wise they are productive positive so you no one is controlling over there in such scenario 
right they are self control they are creative thinking understand the uh, thinking brainstorming is done in a very great way if you are giving employee empower if you suppose you being an manager you decided that the team has to take into somewhere ask everyone's those who are in those teams ask them certain ideas and combinedly and collectively perform and reach to certain decision what happens every employee takes a intergistic part in that and they always think that we are the very major part of the organizations can i go to the next slide guys so lessons to empower you can see certain companies who have literally given empowerment to the employees like first is uh, fedex you will find that they have given uh, their share their decision making powers their works and uh, everything with the employees so over in this company employees are always empowered then comes out hcl mr vinith nayar they have also then obviously steve jobs the good in the ex co-founder and ex uh, ceo of apple then in the war general obviously if there war obviously everyone is given a is a equalizations way and every takes a crucial part to uh, save their country the save their citizens of their country at toyota mr radan data is also doing that sharing of employees in, in a way in a very good manner you will find microsoft does that and obviously infosys mr narayan murthy also does the same thing if any important decisions in important concepts important projects anything these companies all believe in a employee empowerment in a very positive way so lastly the conclusion like what i believe might be the believement of yours outside because you might be in a learning post process and this employee empowerment is a very new style and new concept these days in an organization so obviously in home also in our personal life also if we are empowered we feel a part of that uh, family right that decisions are not taken like that could have asked us also might be we could have give you the better suggestions because a simple person also gives a very better decisions so i believe that empowerment is not a passive activity it's an active activity deliberate program that involves close examination of each circumstance and each employee it should be the manager's goal to bring each individual up to the next level of empowerment and it should be each employee's goal to achieve and accept each progressive level the overview of empowerment can increase the quality and performance of employees thank you so much for today's session and i expect certain questions subhagya gor no problem guys please come up if there is any problem and i hope uh, in near future you people will be the best managers and uh, you being the best managers you will always share the decision making capability with your human resources you will really bring out this joy empowerment management style in your organization and you will certainly deal with the challenges in a very innovative way i guess any queries okay if there are no queries it means that whatever i were good to you and you take these things in a adi can you okay let you hear me am i able to you okay 
Okay. Are you working or your call is going, Radhika? How many of you are in a... Okay, you are in a call is great. So I hope uh, you are going... If you become a, a manager in future, you will obviously deal with the challenges and you'll bring out the new concept. How many of you are like uh, working or colleagues? Mr. Gaur, are you working or colleagues? Colleagues, okay, great. So today's concept is very new one for the future managers. I hope future managers are going to bring out this concept in their working scenario. Chalo, thank you so much for attending. Thank you so much for the attention. If any queries, anything, please do talk with the organizers. Thank you so much.